All right, guys, welcome back to Valorant News. Masters Shanghai is over. Genji lift the trophy for the first time for the Pacific region in front of a shell shocked Chinese crowd. Team Heretics just fall short in the end. So much discussion on these two respective teams. What a grand final it turned out to be. Loads of talking points elsewhere and reaction for many of the pro players. Very much on Twitter. Your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. First of all, Sentinels Tarek stays. This shouldn't be a mega surprise, but he's officially re signed his contract over there. We also got got today confirmation of Abyss, what it's going to look like, how it's going to play. This is basically the trailer for this new map. And okay, there was some pretty cool stuff in here. Of course, what we really care about, is it going to play well for competitive? Well, there was a show match. How much does that show? Not necessarily so much. Until the pros really play it, that's when you're going to get an idea. Of course, it's Abyss, right? So there are plenty of spots you can straight up fall off this map, of which many players have already done so. Two bomb sites. Three lane layout is one way to describe it. A square layout is another way to look at it, kind of, you know, like what Dust 2 is. Imagine it's basically a square with the three lanes, the connecting layers. And look, is this, well, what can you equate this to in terms of Counter Strike maps? People are saying, oh, Vertigo, because you can fall off, but it ain't really Vertigo. It's maybe more like a Nubis having watched this play a little bit. But um, yeah, this is what it looks like. These are some of the options. Vertical gameplay with a branching mid. There were some interesting ideas here on this map. I'm not sure I love it on first sight, but I guess time will only tell and look we saw a few moments this was a phenomenal clip as well here with using the gecko because gecko is is programmed to actually make use of the parkour so um, he can actually jump over some of these vertical drops and just go and straight up plant the spike down there so kind of incredible stuff actually and uh, well executed i suppose in designing this map we also got some cool moments here for mixwell as he sees here he jumps off the map and then midair hits the teleport with the omen so there's some very interesting ideas you can play around with here on this map I'm sure that we will see pros abuse some interesting ideas, certainly with some of the agents that are going to come back into the meta after this tournament. As Ethan says, excited to see how this plays in a competitive environment, he says. So um, I can't quite tell whether he's been sarcastic or not, because I imagine some of the pros think is, you know, do we need more maps in the game? But whatever, Ethan and NRG, they've now got that new team. The map's going to be in the game for June the 11th, and it's going to be in the competitive rotation for the second half of the season. So lots going on, lots changing around the world right now. We we also got this confirmation here from Leo Faria that Champions 2025 is going to be held in October. So um, this year it's going to be in August, right, in a couple of months' time. Next year it's going to be even later, which is probably fine. It just depends on what happens in the rest of the season, right? Because I think many would say this year it's not compact. Like there's quite a lot of spreading out again in the Valorant format. But it just isn't that much being played, as far as I'm concerned, by most teams over the course of the season. So pushing it back means that they can allow for more breaks for players in between events and for more competitions. That seems to be a good idea to me. I wonder how that will align with the Esports World Cup, because this year, League of Legends, Counter-Strike, Dota 2, basically every game under the sun is going to be at the Esports World Cup in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia from July to August. There were rumours the other day that Valorant was probably going to be there, but um, it didn't happen because of scheduling conflicts with the other teams. So next year, given that Riot and League of Legends is being a thing, you know, whatever the controversial perspectives on that may be, Valorant probably will be there next season. I'd be surprised if it isn't, if the Esports World Cup continues to go ahead. So um, I imagine part of the thought process here may be to keep that time, you know, to keep August and July relatively free, or at least a little bit of time in that time span relatively free, so that the Sports World Cup is a possibility in the middle of the season. I guess time will tell on that one. Just quickly here for Marv's consistent streamer starting next week and here he goes with the Sentinels bag. Interesting to think about of course this right because what is going to be happening next with Marv? He's gone from NRG. That did surprise me but like a return to Sentinel seems highly unlikely. So where could Marv go next? There's multiple champions of international tournaments such as Pankara. He bowed his time on the Sentinels bench. He ended up on Loud. Well okay, we think he did, although that's not yet been officially confirmed. And there are some speculation around the visa problems that Pankada may currently be going through. So interesting to see for Marv. Of course, Pankada, though, got the majority of the season to figure this out. Marv's 
basically now has no time. Unless he gets a deal done now and joins a new team, which seems highly unlikely, it's probably going to be next season when Marv will be back in the league, depending on what he does. As he says, consistent streamer. So, um, you know, like FNS and Som were a consistent streamer for some time. Now they're back in the league. Even Zelsis was talking about this, right? Because the two grand finalists of the tournament were teams not from the Americas, right? We had a European team, of course. We had an APAC team. The teams that were third and fourth were the two North American teams. G2 and 100 Thieves of the four that made it to the Mercedes-Benz Arena. So Zelsis is like, look, only one man can save NA. Maybe it's about time that Sentinels return to the top and all this stuff. And there's been some debate over the last couple of days. Had Sentinels qualified, how well would they have done? Because if you look at the run that Team Heretics made to the Grand Finals, you look at the teams they beat... You know, in, on paper, it's not exactly the best run we've ever seen at a championship tournament. So um, there is an argument that if another team from the Americas, let's say Sentinels, were there, how would they have got on? The reality is it doesn't matter. You've got a beat who's in front of you. They didn't qualify. But even John QT was looking at these results this event and was saying, oh, well, you know what, maybe Americas need Sentinels back. Otherwise, these types of results are going to continue. Even in the Team Heretics G2 series, you know, we saw some interesting tweets coming out, for example, from Sentinels right about here. There is just this quickly from Boaster to mention on the Fnatic side because they obviously bowed out earlier than they expected to from this tournament. We could see the frustration deeply on Boaster and, you know, just the sadness really for going out when they did. And there's been questions, what would Fnatic do? You know, is it time they move on from Boaster and go down a different IGLing route? I would not be at all surprised if they do that in the offseason, but I feel like making a change given where Fnatic are before then would be a surprise to me. So I think this tweet from Boaster here when he says, like, we've really got to get our heads down and prepare. I appreciate the costumes and the interviews. Like, you know, he really enjoys being there at the venue and all this stuff. So cool to see from Boaster that he's having a good time. But as he says, like, we've really got to lock in now from now to the end of the season, which kind of confirms Boaster ain't going to be going anywhere yet but time I suppose will tell the big question was going into the finals depending on what happens here what happens with Heretics? If Heretics win, what does that mean for Miniboo and for Patty Tech? As Bodok says, Heretics might be the one team that can actually make a six-man roster work. Could you swap out Patty Tech and Woot on the duel list? And obviously Miniboo comes back in. I think the thing is for Miniboo, even though they, Heretics, massively outperformed expectations, I think, this tournament, given the fact that they had a substitute on their roster, they still probably should bring Miniboo back in, not just because, but in part because the way the meta is going to change, like Neon is now going to be viable again. Me, boo, you know, you can't leave them off the team. And Neil Zinio says this that's not how my vision for the team is. It will go back to how it was, saying that, yeah, we're going to go back to our five man roster. Patty Tech is going to be gone, but, um, like he's too good for a sixth man role. He deserves to be on a top franchise team. So, Neil Zinio making it clear before the grand final, so, of course, head coach of the team that. You know, there's no way that we are keeping Patty Tech in. It's going to go back to Mini Boo, regardless of what happens. That is going to be the five man iteration. And I think in the grand finals, we saw in a couple of occasions why Mini Boo might have been very valuable. And had he gone, they could very well have won the entire thing, right? So Zelta says, all right, Sentinels are going to be both Heretics and Genji in the grand finals. The grand finals gets underway. And we've just got to talk about this Genji team for a second, right? Because I mentioned this now, probably a week and a bit ago, that if Genji were to go on to win this tournament, it would be one of the most impressive things that I've seen in Valorant, given lots of it, at least the, the external circumstances. The fact that Gen G in China are not especially well liked for what the organization said about Taiwan. You guys know the story a couple of years ago now. But, um, you know, Gen G go out there, they're playing ranks, they're, you know, people are flaming them, basically. They can't get practice. Apparently, that was the other big thing that Genji especially were unable to get any scrims off Chinese teams in region because they would refuse to practice against them. So um, for multiple reasons, Genji seemingly were at a disadvantage this tournament. And every game they played there against the crowd, you know, fair play to the crowd, I guess, cheering for the trophy lift. But apart from that, it was an absolute library in Shanghai today during most of these games. But Genji now for some time have looked like the best team in the world in terms of ability, like raw talent, and in terms of chemistry and teamwork. These guys are next level and on an individual level they're so much fun to watch as well here was a one versus two for texture as well he gets the first frag he misses the second shot onto Rians, but it doesn't matter because he connects with the final one in the chamber of the marshal and that's enough to get a 2-0 lead and this point it looked like wow Jinji are going to run away with this series it's not even going to be close this by the way at the time texture had i mean what is this like five times the acs that woot had like it was pretty absurd but all of a sudden heretics start to string together some rounds and they're looking more and more competitive they 
bring themselves back into the icebox, they win the icebox, they then go to an ascent, and man, Benji Fishy was making some serious plays, his mama Benji Fishy on uh, the watch party, which I thought was really nice to see, and they bring this one back. Eventually, Boo finds himself in a one versus two. This is a crazy map as well, because heretics are building the momentum. Gen G just all of a sudden were going down 2-1 in the series. They felt like they were losing their momentum. I mean, Patty Tech was making big plays. It's got to be said, right, over such a long series, it's difficult to maintain the kind of level that you have for the entire time. So, you know, Genji started hot, then they cooled down, Heretics came back in, but then, when it mattered, Heretics didn't have quite enough right. Both just like, look, they've woken up, and obviously Avoba chimes in as well. I've seen enough Heretics are winning. Wooters the go, because he was making some insane plays again. But, we then go to a Lotus, where Genji start to dominate, and this was around that really summed the whole thing up, because, I mean, here we go, Rians gets one, he then gets the second onto Texture. Munchkin has five HP, one versus two, and and, um, you know, this is ridiculous, right? He finds the first, 10 seconds on the clock, and he just reads Patty Tech straight through the wall and gets the frag. Like, when that type of stuff is happening, when you're reading the game and you're playing it on that level, there's nothing you can do. And all of these guys played well, but Texture, again, was a massively important factor in the final map, and genuinely, they just destroyed them on this final split. Like, this offense was absolute demolition job. Benji Fisher was getting exposed on all the sites and the teamwork from Genji was just next level. So there you have it. Genji Master Shanghai champions. And what a result really for the APAC region. Like we've talked about teams from APAC for a long time. New Turn, Vision Strikers, you know, DRX, Paper X, all of these teams that have come and gone in some part. Okay, Paper X and DRX are kind of still here, but you know what I mean. The iterations have changed over time, but it's Genji of all the teams that come through and win the events here internationally for the first time for the Pacific. And to do so in front of this Chinese crowd as well was, you know, unbelievable tournament performance from them. So what a result. Super happy for the Genji guys. Just hit the refresh on this real quick because it's now concluded. Just to go through all of the maps of the series. This breeze maybe was the one where heretics will think, well, if we had mini boo, that could be a bit of a different story. Of course, Genji got the advantage of choosing which maps got banned out of the series. So that is an advantage. But heretics, of course, well, earns the disadvantage because they had to come through the losers bracket here, right? But 13-4... 13-3 final couple of maps. In the end, it wasn't even that close. John QT gives them the credit. Congratulations, Genji, for the redemption run. Well deserved. Impressive run by Heretics. He said everyone expectations with the sub. I guess this still means Sentinels is still number one. So we'll see what time says on that one. There was, of course, some other discussion here from Alpha actually says, you know, excellent adventure from those guys. Genji, very good tournament. They should be congratulated. But, you know, Heretics were, yes, they run if you look at who they actually beat. I mean, we can have a look at it real quick here, right? Heretics, the team teams that they beat in the results section, you know, at this tournament, getting through Dragon Ranger Gaming, going down a couple of times to G2 before beating them when it mattered, you know, FPX. FPX, by the way, the two teams they lost to were both 2-1 games to Genji and to Heretics. So, you know, are FPX the third best team in the world? I don't know. It's possible. They beat Edwards, beat Foot Esports, beat 100 Thieves, beat G2, and then lost to Genji. So, you know, interesting to look back on. It must be said as well, though, as Zeke mentions here, that Heretics being one map away from winning Masters, they get zero championship points for this result. So they are still absolutely in the mix of not making it to the World Championship. So lots to say over the coming days, but very much interested in your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.